Hello, everyone. My name is Erica Suarez, and I am one of the literacy specialists with Haggerty Phonemic Awareness. I am here today to share with you some of our Spanish curriculum updates for the 2022 curriculum editions. Si usted quiere recibir esta información en español, puede mandarme un correo electrónico en erica arroba Hagerty punto org. Aquí está abajo en su pantalla. We will be reviewing the curriculum revisions today and talking through some of those essential components that we did make changes to and the reasons behind some of those changes. As we thought about our revisions in our curriculum, we really wanted to highlight for you today some of those big instructional shifts in the Spanish curriculum and provide some reasoning as to why those changes were made. The biggest change that you are going to see within our curriculum in both the kindergarten and primary curricula is that we begin the year at the phoneme level. We have made this change for a couple of reasons. The first being that we really want for students to develop a deeper understanding of the variety of syllable types there are in Spanish. Oftentimes when we're working within phonics instruction, our students are exposed and explicitly taught those direct syllables, such as ma, me, mi, mo, mu, or ma, pa, sa, and often students are not exposed to the other syllable types, such as mixed syllables or syllable blends or syllables with diphthong. Within our kindergarten scope and sequence, you will see that for those first nine weeks, students are working with those direct syllables, la sílaba se ve, or those inverse syllables, la sílaba de se, or las sílabas mixtas, los se, ve, se syllables. You're going to see that students work with blending, segmenting, and manipulating those types of syllables. This is allowing for students to develop both phonemic awareness and syllable awareness at the same time, which is a huge shift from our previous edition. In the primary curriculum, you're going to see that students do still begin the year working with those direct and mixed syllables, but we also are exposing them to some more of those complex syllable types like las sílabas trabadas, las sílabas con diptongos. And we really take a deep dive again into this work with blending, segmenting, and manipulating. Another change that you will see within the curriculum is going to be our alphabet knowledge section. In our previous editions, the large focus of this section was really on the automaticity of letter names, letter sounds, and syllable identification with those direct syllables. In our newer editions, what you're going to see is how we are intentionally building that deeper understanding of those sounds and letters and how they work together, as well as those syllables. And not just those direct syllables, but those mixed syllables, las sílabas trabadas y los diptongos as well. Again, we really want to think about our phonological awareness lessons as a way to build that oral language and utilizing that alphabet knowledge time or those phoneme graphing connections as a way to make those print connections. An example of what this looks like in the kindergarten curriculum is listed here. This comes from week 24, and you will see that we really pulled in las sílabas trabadas, inviting the teacher to utilize a syllable flip chart or a whiteboard, and providing students with the opportunity to read and practice those syllables. Again, we want this to become automatic for students, but working with the manipulation of that print and asking students to now blend or decode those syllables out loud in connection with print is going to help them transfer these phonological awareness skills over to their decoding. In our primary curriculum, you will see that this goes into a little bit more detail. We have broken it apart into decoding examples as well as encoding examples. 
And you can utilize the words from the blending and segmenting components of your curriculum to implement these phoneme graphing connections within the lessons. We have also provided some opportunities for manipulation with these phonemes within the syllable types that you will find within some of the weeks as well. We are really excited about this change and hope that you are also. A huge instructional shift within our primary curriculum is the addition of review weeks. So you will see within that primary scope and sequence, that we have 30 weeks of tier one instruction instead of 35. And those last weeks, 31 through 35, are weeks for either review um, or for intervention time. We have provided different stopping points within the curriculum, and you'll see that highlighted within the overview pages with a yield sign so that you can jump from week two to week 31 if your students need more practice with those direct syllables, or from week four to week 32 if your students still need practice with blends and diphthongs. Utilizing the overview pages, which I'll talk about shortly, are going to be a huge support in helping you understand how to best use those overview or those review weeks with your class. Those review weeks can also just be used at the end of the school year as a way to review and practice in a fun way the skills students have learned, or you can utilize those review weeks as a way to provide additional intervention and support to students that need it. As we think about the lessons, what additional supports have been added to the curriculum? So I've just finished talking about some of those big overall changes within the curriculum, but what else is different as you start to flip through the lessons and take a look at the pages? The very first big change that you're going to find is the addition of overview pages. We have included overview pages at major changes um, within our curriculum. And you will see that we provide that overview for teachers as a way for them to see what is coming in the weeks ahead. Within the overview pages, in addition to the activities that are taught with those different skills, you will also see a skill focus, hand motions, and additional supports. This is an example of what a review page looks like. This comes from the kindergarten curriculum. At the top, you will see the skills listed as well as the different activities that we use to practice and reinforce those skills. Within the table, you will be able to see exactly what those activities are, what weeks they are within the curriculum, and then further identify the skill focus, the hand motions, and additional support for those weeks. We are hoping that these overview pages provide a way for you to dig deeper into planning and preparation for your phonological awareness lessons. In addition to the overview pages, we have incorporated some additional supports within the lessons. Some of those supports include a QR code, specific teacher language, the skill focus, and the hand motions. And within the lessons, I would like to highlight those for you. If you are looking at the far left-hand side of your curriculum, you will see that we have specific teacher language for those instructions. The teacher is invited to simply read these directions off to explain to students what they will be doing for the day. We'll also see that I've highlighted the skill focus or the enfoque for you. This is a wonderful piece to communicate to students to explain to them the expectations for the activity you are about to begin. Finally, you will see the QR code at the top of each page. This QR code, when scanned, will take you to a landing page for the curriculum. You will be able to view a sample lesson for that week, view additional skill tutorial videos, as well as other supports within our website. Finally, I would like to talk to you about some of the additional visual supports we've implemented within the curriculum. You will see various symbols used as you start to implement this curriculum, and I want to explain to you what those are today. The sun is a representation of metalinguistic instruction ideas. 
We have chosen to include this for teachers as a way to help bridge the connection between both the English and Spanish language. You will also see a magic wand symbol. This shows teachers some additional ideas for support within the lessons. In addition to our hand motions, which you'll see represented with a hand symbol, the magic wand provides the teacher with additional ways that they can support students in their learning. Finally, within the primary curriculum, you will see the yield sign. This yield sign will be in the overview pages, as well as within the weeks of instruction, anytime that we recommend further review for your students. Within the lesson, so this is what that looks like. So you'll see we have within the overview pages that key for you, as well as some examples of what that magic wand and that yield sign, and again, that metalinguistic instruction looks like within those lesson pages. I want to leave you today with this quote that change is the end result of all true learning. And we are so excited about the changes that we have made in this 2022 edition of our Spanish curriculum. And we really did dig into the research and spent hours upon hours of finding the best way to make sure that this curriculum honors the Spanish language and the development of reading and writing, as well as listening and speaking. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate you being here to learn more about our curriculum changes. Please feel free to contact me at erica at hegarty.org with any further questions and follow us on social media. Thank you so much for being here today. Have a wonderful day and I hope to hear from you soon.